Operating or servicing machinery and moving parts can lead to a range of caught in or between risks, from snagging your hand on a table saw to more severe consequences like limb amputation or even death if you get caught in large industrial equipment. So when you're operating machinery, the first line of defense is always machine guarded. Make sure any moving parts are properly shielded so you don't make accidental contact. And avoid wearing loose clothing, jewelry, or long hair that could get caught in the machinery and pull you in. If you need to service the machinery, be sure to de-energize and follow your established lockout tagout procedures just to make sure it doesn't accidentally start up. And if there are any machine parts that could move or drop while you're working, make sure they're blocked, lowered, or otherwise secured to prevent any sudden movement. We already talked about working around heavy machinery and preventing struck by incidents, but it's worth noting that most of the same rules apply for caught in or between hazards. Be aware of the swing radius, make yourself known to the operator, and never put yourself in a position between the equipment and another object or a wall. It's also worth adding that a unique caught in or between hazard with heavy equipment is the risk of a rollover, which could crush both the operator and anyone working nearby. So to prevent a rollover, Make sure that any material handling equipment has rollover protective structures installed and that the support surface is firm enough to handle the expected load. And if you're operating the equipment, never exceed the load capacity and seriously, make sure you wear your seatbelt. Too many rollover deaths happen because the operator's thrown out during a rollover and then crushed by the equipment. Excavation sites also present unique caught in or between hazards that require special attention. For starters, if you're working in a trench that's five feet deep or more, it needs to be properly protected. Unprotected trenches are a cave-in disaster just waiting to happen. Even just a cubic yard of soil can weigh between two and 3,000 pounds. One way to do this is through sloping or benching, where the walls of the trench are angled away from the excavation to reduce the risk of collapse. You can also use proper bracing and shoring, which means setting up supports to keep the soil from moving and to prevent any potential cave-ins. Another option is to use a trench box or a shield. This is essentially just a protective structure that's placed right in the trench to shield you from a cave-in. They're designed to be moved as you make progress on the work. And don't forget about the risk of objects falling or rolling into the excavation. You should use barricades and signals around the trench perimeter to provide an extra layer of protection, especially near mobile equipment. When it comes to demolition sites, only the absolute necessary personnel should be allowed in the work area to minimize risks. Reducing the number of people on site can significantly reduce the chance of someone getting caught in a hazardous situation. Last but not least, let's talk about the designation of what's called a competent person. This is someone who's trained specifically to identify hazards and has the authority to fix them. In construction settings, they're usually a requirement. They make sure scaffolding is safe, check that heavy equipment's on a stable surface, and they inspect trenches for proper protection. During demolition, they also conduct engineering surveys to make sure the structures are stable and safely demolished. So, by having a designated competent person on site for each activity, you're adding a necessary layer of specialist support to make sure everything's done in line with OSHA safety standards.